again beloved we do bid you welcome to those who are worshiping with us via facebook whether you've joined us via conference call or youtube or you've chosen to drive up this morning on this beautiful sunday morning indeed once again we are grateful that you chose to worship with us on this day and before we start our worship celebration just have a few announcements that i would like to uh, for you to receive Today is the first Sunday in October. We will be consecrating communion. For those who would like to receive it, I will be in the front of the church until 12.45 p.m. I also will be in the office on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Just feel free to call. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Once again, on this Wednesday, we will be having our homework hotline. Please encourage your youth to call the church. The number and the information information is on our Facebook page. Our quarterly conference has been rescheduled. It's for this Wednesday, October the 7th at 6.30 p.m. Therefore, we will not have Bible study. We will start Bible study on Wednesday, October the 14th. Once again, our first quarterly conference will be this Wednesday, October the 7th at 6.30. And I will be forwarding the information once I receive it. On this Thursday, beloved, on this Thursday, October the 8th at 6.30 p.m., our very own St. Paul Social Action Ministry is hosting an absentee ballot presentation. You can join it via Zoom and Facebook. That information is on our Facebook page and website as well. The guest presenter is the Honorable Gina Jay, it's not, is it Jonathan? Ishman. Ishman, amen. I looked at that and thought that was wrong. Amen. It's Gina Ishman. She is the circuit clerk in Montgomery County. Amen. And then we are supporting Faith in Action Alabama. I'm going to ask the media team if they could cue up that video. Faith in Action Alabama is leading a campaign to restore voting rights for formerly incarcerated Alabamians. Please show the brief video at this time. While they are getting that together, amen, we will come back to that. I'm going to ask you if you would please keep Brother Henry Myers in your prayers. He had surgery on Friday, but he is indeed recuperating at home. We say thank you, Lord. I also would ask if you would keep the Bowden and the Murdoch Church family and the entire AME connection in your prayers. In the passing of Brother Richard Bowden, he is the connection treasurer of the lay organization. Indeed, we have experienced a great loss. Once again, beloved, we know that stewardship begins at home. So if a need arises, please, within the church family, please do not hesitate to reach out to an officer or myself. Amen. So, beloved, we will show the um, video on the Faith in Action Alabama at a later time during the service, or we will queue it up on next Sunday. And the people of God said... Amen. Oh, and the people of God said, Amen. Beloved, have you come to worship? Amen. Have you come to magnify the Lord? Have you come to exalt his name with me? Has God been faithful? Has God been kind? Has God been good? Did he wake you up this morning? Then I 
they join with me and sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day of course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because those that plan the house of the Lord shall because of the house. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planning the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in your house, Lord. I love your habitation and the place where you honor dwell. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I will sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing praises. Beloved, I ask you will please remain standing and on this first Sunday as a church family, let us recite the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Make of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, revoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless us, Ministry of Music.
forever God and we just bow before you God coming to you because where would we go if it weren't for you we have no one else to turn to ultimately but you and God we've collectively confessed our sins to you 
And God, I thank you that your word says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us, God, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, God, I just thank you that you're not a man that you should lie. And that every word you've spoken, every promise you've made, Lord, you will fulfill it. Man may go back on his word, God, but not you. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you, Lord, for how you've kept us during this pandemic, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. God, we struggle sometimes. Yes, God. We've been tired sometimes, Lord, and we've wondered why. But God, we're still standing today, and for that we say thank you. Because if it had not been for you on our side, if it had not been for you on our side, oh Lord, where would we be? God, I just thank you that you've kept us safe, Lord, as we've traveled up and down highways, God. You've protected us from danger, seen and unseen. God, you've continued to love us even in the face of us being unkind to other people. You still, God, extended your mercy to us, Lord, and we refused to extend mercy to somebody else. God, you still covered us, covered us with your grace. And for that, God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, that we can trust and depend and know that you are in control no matter what today looks like. And because you are in control, God, I lift up those families, Lord, who are mourning the loss of a loved one, God. Whose hearts are hurting, Lord. Whose lives may be feeling empty because of that loss. God, you are a comforter. Comfort that family, God. Strengthen that family, Lord. And by your, the power of your Holy Spirit, help them to turn and look to you, God. And for those who are suffering from illnesses, Lord, no matter what the doctor has said, Lord, you are the great physician. Yes, Lord. And you have the final say-so in every situation that we face, God, even in a medical situation. And for those who find themselves struggling, God, in those situations, help them to hold on to faith, God, Hold on to your hand to know that by your stripes we are healed. That healing wasn't just done in the Old and the New Testament, but it's still being done through the power of your Holy Spirit today, yes. God. Yes, God. And for those, Father, who have suffered financial losses, Lord, during this time period, who are on the brink of homelessness, God. God, who feel like their their backs are against the wall and they just don't know what to do. God, move in those situations. Move in a mighty way, God, to show them that there is a God who cares about them, Lord. And God, I thank you that you allowed our pastor to return to us, God. I thank you, Lord, for her commitment first and foremost to you. And I pray, God, that you would just cover her and strengthen her, God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, God, so that she would continue to do what thus says the Lord. And God, I pray for St. Paul as a church family, that even though we have been apart physically, God, that you will continue to keep us united spiritually. And God, I, I just love your name. I love you, God. And I give you all the honor and glory. It's in your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You're doing in this 
son, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. says, Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory, Patrick. Glory be to the Father.
heavens will shout at the sound of his coming and the sleeping shall rise from their slumbering God said amen again. We praise God for the ministry of music, Sister Tabitha, Brother Katard, and our soloists for our sermonic selection, Sister Annie Witherspoon. We thank God for the stewardess that are on duty, our media team who gives of themselves and makes sacrifices each week. And certainly, not least, but our clergy team. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Beloved, our sermonic text comes from the prophet Isaiah. The 61st chapter of Isaiah. I'm going to lift up verses 1 and 2 and then conclude with verse 7. But in your devotion time, I ask you to read all seven verses. The first verse says that the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed, somebody say anointed, has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Somebody say favor. favor. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. Amen. Verse 7. Instead 
of your shame you will receive a double portion somebody say double portion and instead of disgrace you will rejoice in your inheritance and so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours on this communion sunday double for your trouble double for your trouble shall we bow shall we pray once again god i stand behind this sacred desk not taking this preaching moment for granted but understanding god that i'm solely depending upon you god speak to my very soul give me a ready ear to hear thus says the lord because it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord of hosts it's in jesus name that i do pray and the people of god in agreement said amen double for your trouble beloved in 2002 donald lawrence had an album and sister tabitha the, the title of this album was go get your life back <laughs> and in the lead single uh-huh was the best that's it uh-huh is yet to come the song says uh, hold on my brother don't give up hold on my sister just look up there is a master plan in store for you if you just make it through God's gonna really blow your mind he's gonna make it worth your time for all of the trouble uh, you've been through the blessings double just <laughs> for you I'm talking about double uh, for your trouble double beloved for all that you have endured that the best uh -huh, is yet to come I'm talking about God's best I'm not talking about second best I'm not talking about a throwback I'm not talking about mediocrity I'm talking about God's best and the best beloved is yet to come and I know brother Johnny that I got some skeptics out there and they're saying how and the answer is is that you got to believe beyond a shallow doubt that it starts right now I'm talking about today beloved not tomorrow not sometime in the future not in the by and by I'm talking about today why because Donald Lawrence says that today is the first day of the best days of your life you got to get that in the spirit realm. Not talking about yesteryear. Not talking about tomorrow. Not talking about forevermore. He says today yeah. is the first day of the best days. Come on, y'all. Uh-huh. What am I trying to say? So don't you dare let your past dictate your future just because you've been through some stuff in 2020. Don't you let your past failures place you, beloved, in a holding pattern. Don't you dare let past mistakes prevent you from trusting God or even trusting yourself. Don't allow your future to be determined by your past predicaments because today beloved is the first day of the best days of your life because the past is just that 
that, beloved, it is the past. So in our scripture lesson, the prophet Isaiah is declaring the year of the Lord's favor. He is declaring a, a period of restoration for God's elect who were coming out of Babylonian captivity. In other words, they were coming out of bondage. They were coming out of struggle. And you need, beloved, to, to prophesy over your situation right now. Somebody needs to say that I'm coming out of this and I don't know beloved what your this is but what I do know is that 2020 it has brought this and it's brought that but you need to lift up holy hands and declare that I'm coming out of this with my hands up shall we beloved engage the text when you uh, consider the writing of the prophet Isaiah, one may conclude that the message of Isaiah in so many ways uh, is the message of the entire Bible. Uh, I got to press my claim. Uh, you see, God, beloved, uh, he judges sin, uh, but then God, uh, he's also faithful, Sister Hazel, uh, to forgive. God, beloved, uh, he not only promises uh, redemption, but God also, uh, he promises uh, restoration. <laughs> you see, beloved, throughout Isaiah's life, Isaiah, he preached about God's righteousness. He warned of the judgment on sin. He comforted his people with the knowledge of God's love. He shared God's longing to forgive. And he prophesied all the glories and favor that was going to be in store for those who remain faithful to God. God, God wanted faithfulness. God wanted fidelity. God wanted loyalty. God wanted constancy. And God wanted reliability. God, beloved, he wanted faithfulness. However, God's people, because of their choices, they end up becoming God's enemies. And then they end up in Babylonian captivity. That's the backdrop. But because, beloved, we serve a merciful God. Because God declares in his word that mercies are new. Come on, y'all. Every morning. That God still, in spite of our wretchedness, he offers forgiveness. So God promises favor, but it's conditional for those who will yet remain faithful to him. And even today, beloved, God is still calling us to remain faithful in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of, of the uncertainty, in, in, in the midst, beloved, I talked about it, discouragement, in the midst uh, of desperation, uh, in the midst uh, of all your questions, uh, in the midst, beloved, uh, of all your doubt, uh, God is still calling uh, for his people, uh, his chosen ones, uh, his elect ones, uh, the ones who have been set apart. Uh, he's calling the church uh, to be faithful. He's calling the church to demonstrate concern for justice, to demonstrate concern for the poor, to demonstrate concern for the marginalized, and for all of those 
who mourn. Somebody said, well, Pastor Hunts, how does that look? I'm glad you ask. You need to vote. Amen. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, you need to complete the census. <laughs> Beloved, black lives still do matter. Yes. Breonna Taylor, you need to call her name. The Bible says uh, that he has sent me. I know you don't like it, but that's all right. Come on, amen, lights. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he has sent me. The Bible infers that he has sent the church uh -huh, to bind up the broken and hearted. I know you needed some word to back up what I just said. <laughs> to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. So I say it again. You need to vote. You need to complete the census. Black lives still do matter. And Breonna Taylor, you need to say her name. Amen. There are some people today, because I'm not that insensitive. I know, beloved, uh, that your back uh, is up against the wall. That you're on the verge uh, of losing everything. Uh, but, beloved, the word says uh, that you need to be steadfast. Uh, you need to be unmovable, uh, always abounding uh, in the work uh, of the Lord. Uh, because I've come, beloved, uh, with some good news. Uh, by now, you need to know I'm a good news preacher. Because uh, for all of the trouble uh, that you've been through, uh, the blessings is going to be double just for you. But you got to remain faithful. You have to remain faithful because there are those in Zion whose God will still redeem. You missed that. God is going to redeem some folk. And God is going to restore some folk. And God is going to show favor on some folk. Because God still has the power. He is omnipotent. He has all power in his hands. He's not a God that he should lie. And him is yes and amen. God promised that he was going to give double for your trouble. So, beloved, I know that we often wonder why. Why am I going through so much turmoil? I am striving to remain faithful to God and to remain faithful to ministry. I'm trying to be steadfast. I'm still tithing. I'm still serving. I'm still trying to do the right thing. But why am I in the fight of my life? Because... God has a greater anointing on your life. Oh, you want the anointing, but you don't want to pay what it costs. Uh, God, beloved time, he has a greater calling uh, on your life. Can I get some Bible to back that up? Uh, because even uh, in the garden of Gethsemane, uh, Jesus realized uh, that he had a greater calling uh, and a greater anointing uh, on his life. Uh, through blood-stained tears, uh, Jesus said, not my will, uh, but thy will be done. God's anointing. It costs. And we all, beloved, have Gethsemane experience. Can I teach for a moment? The word Gethsemane, it actually means oil press. Oh, say, 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 stay with me. <laughs> so, so, so when we, beloved, uh, like the olives uh, are pressed uh, or are crushed, uh, it's part of the process uh, to extract the uh, olive oil, uh, to extract the greater anointing uh, so that you can be used, beloved, uh, for a greater purpose uh, in the kingdom of God. 
other words, God is merely anointing you for the new assignment that is on your life. So just give me 10 more minutes. Uh, so, so, so for your consideration, uh, there is a threefold move uh -huh, in the scripture lesson uh, that we are studying. So, so the first movement uh, is the anointing. The Bible says uh, that God has anointed me. The Lord has anointed uh, to preach uh, and to teach uh, and to speak life uh, in some dead situations. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, you missed that. Uh, you see, beloved, uh, in biblical times, uh, the anointing, uh, it indicated uh, the act uh, of taking oil uh, and smearing it uh, on a person's forehead. But the remaining oil would be poured over their heads so that it ran down to their feet showing that they were totally consecrated that they were totally being set apart for God's purpose so beloved you're being set apart for a greater purpose even though you cannot fathom it right now so the first movement is the anointing. The second movement uh, is to tell the purpose of the anointing. You see, the purpose uh, of the anointing uh, is not just for you. Uh, I know we live in a self-centered society where everything is about me uh, and mine. But the purpose uh, of the anointing that is on your life uh, is not just about you and your family and your homies. Uh, the Bible says uh, that God has anointed uh, and he has sent the church uh, to bind, proclaim, release, uh, comfort, to provide and bestow. You're looking at me strange. The Lord, beloved, he has sent you to the weary in mind. He sent you, beloved, to the broken in body. He sent you, beloved, to folk with sad souls so that you can speak life into dead situations. I'm going to talk about that next week. That life and death is in the power of the tongue. And if you are anointed of God, you can go and speak and turn some situations around. So a fundamental understanding that all of us need to grasp is that the anointing on your life, beloved, is not just for you. Finally, the third movement. The third movement is a public showing of the blessing, of the favor of God. Because some folk are not going to believe it until they can see it. Some folk got to have a demonstration. So God says, uh, because I'm in the text, if you're reading the Bible along with me, uh, God says, because of your faithfulness, you will be called oaks of righteousness as a display of the splendor of the Lord. That's why I told you to read all seven verses. Amen. He said you're going to be an oak of righteousness because you have stood, beloved, the test of time and you did not cave in under pressure. So you're not a sapling, but you are an oak. I had to look that thing up. Don't y'all know that an oak tree will grow regardless of whether the soil is rich, whether it's moist, whether it's sandy, or whether it's even dry. And I don't know about you, but that's some good news right now. Because even if you feel like you are in a dry season, that God can complete his good and perfect work in you. And in the meantime, and in between time, you just hold on to his unchanging hands. Because when he bring you through, you're going to be an oak. Yeah. Of what? 
righteousness. Seems, beloved, that seem to have been in ruin forever. Seems, beloved, that the passing generations, uh, they have been unable to mend. I'm declaring that all of this brokenness uh, is going to be restored uh, in Jesus' name. I know I need some Bible uh, to back that up. Uh, the Word of God says, uh, instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance, and so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and everlasting joy will be theirs. You're looking at me strange. Can I get New Living Translation on you? Instead of shame and dishonor, beloved, you're going to inherit a double portion, and you're going to have everlasting joy. Double portion of prosperity. Double portion of everlasting joy. Double for your trouble. Don't be dismayed. Whatever betide. Because God will. Yes, he will. He'll take care of you. I know that everything, beloved, feels like a struggle. I believe God has us in the oil press. Because God is crushing the olive uh, for a greater anointing uh, that is on your life. That God has a greater calling uh, that is on your life. Because uh, God has a greater work uh, that he's calling uh, for us to do. So for what God is taking you, beloved, uh, a double portion uh, of the anointing uh, is being mandated uh, on your life. Uh, you still looking at me strange. So for all of the crazy that's going on right now, for all of the hoopla that you're sick and tired of, for all of that you have lost, for all of the perceived setbacks that you have experienced in 2020, you need to remain faithful because you're going to receive double for your trouble. Oh, you didn't get it. You need to go ahead and shout right now. You need to go ahead and praise the Lord right now. You need to start the celebration right now because you ain't seen nothing yet. So what am I saying? You need to remain faithful because it's only a test. The best is yet to come. God's uh, got a master plan. I like to say God's got a designer blessing with your name on it, baby, because the best uh, is yet uh, to come. What the enemy meant, beloved, uh, for evil, uh, God uh, is going to work it out uh, for your good. The best uh, is yet uh, to come. You need to choose righteousness over evil. You need to think twice. Ask the Lord to strengthen you in this season because the best is yet to come because today is the first day of the best days of your life. The best is yet to come. Can I conclude it like this? Because you ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing yet. Woo! You ain't uh, seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. Because the best is yet to come double for your trouble. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will inherit a double portion of prosperity.
come a little closer. I'm not just talking about money, but I'm talking about prosperity in your health, prosperity in your relationships, uh, prosperity in your wisdom, uh, prosperity in your influence, uh, prosperity uh, in your connections, uh, prosperity uh, in your business. Uh, you will receive, uh, you will inherit uh, a double portion of prosperity uh, and everlasting joy because uh, this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away cause you ain't seen nothing you ain't seen nothing you ain't seen nothing you see my glory you don't know my story you ain't Perhaps there's one beloved under the sound of my voice. Beloved, you need joy in this season. And the joy that you need, the world cannot give it to you. The world cannot bestow it upon you. You need Jesus' joy. And the only way you can receive it is by having the Lord as your Savior. By asking God to save your soul and receiving the gift of salvation. If you desire that, please pray with me. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross so that I can have everlasting life. Thank you for rising in three days so that I can have Holy Ghost power to live right and to live for you. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer, I encourage you to contact St. Paul. Beloved, come on now. Even if you're not in the metropolitan city of Montgomery, we can connect you with an AME church over the entire world. So please contact us, inbox us via Facebook. You can email us. You can contact the church. Area code 334-286-8577. You know the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Come on, y'all. Come on. Hey, let's have the church. This joy I have. Hey, the world didn't give it to me. Come on, fam. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. You know the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Yeah. One more time. Come on, y'all. This joy I have. One more time. Come on. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, Mercy. 
answer from God. Hallelujah. I know, Tab, come on, it's first Sunday. We got about 10 minutes more to go. So you got to help me let that thing go, girl. Woo! My God. Yay! Woo! Hey! <laughs> Take it away. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you, God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, break through. Break through blessings. Come on, God. Break through. Miracle blessings. Come on, God. Restoration. Please remain faithful in this season. God is going to blow your mind. And if you're honest with yourself, truly honest, even in this drought, God is still supplying all of your needs. Amen. Yes, he is. See, I don't like to talk like this because I know the anointing that's on my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let that go. So if you honest with yourself, your bills are still getting paid. Hallelujah. If you want to be honest. Yes. I ain't see all your desires. He promised to supply all of your needs. And if you stop complaining and start delighting yourself in him, watch him start to give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to let that go. But I know what I know what I know what I know. Yeah. And I'm not going to let nobody take that from me. Because I know. I know what I know what I know what I know. Just be honest. God is taking care of you. He is covering you. He is keeping you. Yes, God. I know we got to go, but see, somebody being healed right now. Yes, God. A wonderful change. Come on. Just a little bit, and we're gonna move. But but you need this. prosperity gospel or a prosperity message this is just trusting God at his word I invite you to please stand at this time beloved and let us read the word of God together let us read God
God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we in the, in the, in the, in the sanctuary will give at this time. for your sacrificial giving. God, you know the season that some of us are in. Please multiply their seed back unto them. Some tenfold, some a hundredfold, some a thousandfold. By having you move and bless them, God, we're going to give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, please prepare your hearts for Holy Communion. Amen. Well, my Savior, are you okay? Down where well from clean sin from sin, I cry. There to my heart was the blood of pride. Sing glory to His name. truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the command of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God. You can kneel or you can sit, you can stand. But beloved, the general confession as a church family has already been read the prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption who made there by his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, 
O oh, merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, beloved, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Beloved, drink, drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as you should drink it in remembrance of me. Christ's body, broken for me, I eat and I'm grateful. His blood, which was shed for me, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. I drink and I'm grateful. Beloved, there are those who have communion now. Christ's body, which was broken just for you, take and eat. His blood, there is healing in the blood of the Lamb. Take and drink. We're going to prepare to say the Lord's Prayer delivered together, and then I will make an announcement about communion. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, beloved, I would like to announce that for those who would like to come by the church, I will be here until 1245. If you would like to have communion, also either on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I will be at the church. In addition, for seniors, you should have already received communion from last month. The two was given out. But if you need so, if you need communion, when Sister Mary Salon contact you, please allow her to know, and it will be given to you on Thursday. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will inherit a double portion of prosperity and everlasting joy. Double for your trouble, but you must remain faithful. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. 
God bless and keep them real good and allow your face, your countenance, your favor to shine upon them and be gracious to them. God, in this season, God, our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus and give us peace that surpasses all understanding today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And the people of God song. Amen.